Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna build the pony wall behind our new island, but as you can see behind me, we built some mock-ups. So if there's only one thing you take away from this video, it is build mock-ups. It will show you things that you previously hadn't thought of. So let's start over here, Jordan. So the kitchen sink goes under this window and the dishwasher was right here. There's not much room here, so the dishwasher pushed the sink over so the sink was not centered on the window. We want our sink to be centered on the window, so we moved our dishwasher to this side. We have this island here, so we wanted to make sure that the dishwasher door didn't hit the island. And that's something we always think about with uh, our cabinets and appliances. Can you open this door without it hitting something? Can you open the refrigerator doors? Can you open cabinet drawers without them hitting? Um, like if there was a drawer here, is it gonna hit something here? So on this wall, I made a mark at 24 and a half. That's gonna be our half inch drywall plus our cabinet. So that's the face of the cabinet. And then this mark is, uh, see I have dishwasher door written there? That's where our dishwasher door comes down to. Now originally this island was closer to me. So in order to give us ourselves some more room here, we pushed it that way. And this corner was a little tight, so we pushed it that way. And we also clipped the corners. Just imagine this is simulating our new countertop. And then this piece of plywood won't go to waste we're actually going to build our subtop out of it. The subtop is simply the plywood that is under your stone counter. So originally the pony wall, the pony wall is just a short wall. It was going to be out of two by fours. Since we pushed the island that way, we're now going to make it out of a two by six. This line in the tile was already here. This was the back of the original peninsula in the kitchen. And making it out of a two by six, this, the bottom plate can be one board. It's just gonna make it easier to frame. If it would have been two by fours, we could have done it, but that's easier. So I've already notched it around our conduits. I've determined that this one will be electrical. We'll have 240 volts coming up, feeding an outlet here for the electric oven. And then we'll have 120 volts coming up, feeding our code required ground faults here and here. This one will be our gas for the gas cooktop. It's a dual fuel range. It's gonna come up, loop over to a stud, and come out with a valve right here. So everything's cut outside. Let's go nail this together. So if you want to use screws for this, you can. And go back and watch our beam video where we built those temporary walls. If you want to use screws for that, that's fine. But I would never really use screws for uh, traditional framing. Uh, a, nail, a nail is meant to, to bend. When your walls do this in a seismic event or a wind load, the screw's too brittle and it'll, it'll break. So what I want to do before I bring this inside, I want to add blocking here for our cabinets. So let's get those cut. Let me grab the tape measure. All right, so now that we've got our pony wall put together, let's go inside and get that tile cut so this sits nice and flush on that concrete. All right, we've got our diamond blade ready to go. We're gonna hook up the vacuum and this will be easy. You can still see the old mastic from the original. Yeah, it almost looks like a computer chip, like a motherboard. Oh, it does. The green and the black? Yeah. <laughs> ah. 
Alright, you wanna bring that wall in? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Cool. There we go. Nice. Alright, we're ready, almost ready, to attach that to the slab. We want to take a measurement, make sure it's parallel to that wall. Alright guys, we got our wall in place. We measured it off of the far wall so that it's parallel. We're going to use our favorite anchors. We've already showed you, I think, a couple times before. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to mark the slab in three locations. We're going to move the wall and drill to depth with our vacuum, put the wall back, and drive in our fasteners. So this one will be interesting because this is what I call green concrete. It's only been down a couple of days. So let's see how it drills. And I'm, I'm conscious of where my conduit is. It's, it's running to the left of my bit, so I'm fine. It's, it's pretty deep anyway, I'm not gonna hit it, but I'd hate to drill through it. That's enough to mark that one. And then we'll stagger these a little bit. So on, on this hole and this one, the bit actually went all the way through the slab. I'm fine with that because sometimes as you're driving an anchor, it dislodges concrete from the side of the hole. And if it doesn't go all the way through, it can get packed in the bottom and then this won't drive to full depth. But if it's just gravel or sand or earth under there, it's gonna drive it through. I made a mark here for the end of my wall. All right, let's see if we can line that thing up. <laughs> nice. Yep. Maybe just a little easier to drive in that fresh concrete than in this 40 year old stuff, but. <laughs> this one's over. Yeah. Must have hit a knot or something. <laughs> All right. That's solid. That is a lot more solid than I thought it would be. Right. Part of it's because it's a two by six and we staggered our anchors. But even if it were to wobble a little, it's fine. Because when we put this cabinet here and attach the cabinet to the wall, and the base of the cabinet to the floor. And we're gonna show you that when we do our cabinet installation video. This whole thing becomes locked together as one unit and it's not gonna budge. So it is pretty sweet though that it's super, yep. it's super solid. Cause I'm, I was comparing it, when I grabbed it just now to wiggle it, I was comparing it to the last pony wall that we did with two by fours and that thing wiggled and we put um, a lot more nails in the concrete. Yep. But that's only three, they are staggered two by sixes mm -hmm. and that thing is real solid. It's perfect. Yep. So let's, Let's put these back, rebuild our mock-up real quick, and we'll clean up, and then that's done. We're ready for the plumber and electrician. Sick. So we apologize for the delay. We had a little hiatus there. We actually spent five days in Texas helping some friends. We ended up staying there because of the virus. We couldn't travel back and forth across the state lines, so we just stayed in Texas. We helped them out, got them done. Now we're back on this one. We also had our electricians and our plumbers here doing their rough ends, and then we had all our inspections. So that's what took so long. So let's go inside and check it out. As you can see, we have all our drywall ready to go. Let's start right here. Jordan, you want to come around here? Yeah. So here's our gas line through the conduits that we put in, and it goes all the way back into the attic. They tie it into a three quarter inch line uh, that feeds the laundry room. This is where their gas test valve was. They came by this morning and removed their valve. Here's our 240 volt uh, number six wire on a 50 amp circuit for our range. So electric oven, gas cooktop. And then um, I should have showed you the drawings for the oven, but it specifies a certain area down here where they want all this. And that's what we did. So make sure with your appliances that you check that. 
and put these in the right spot. So there's no interference when you put it back. Uh, this is our receptacles at the island. And then you come on behind you, Jordan. There's our, we'll put, we'll replace that. There's our electric, and there's our gas. This is coming off the load side of this ground fault. And this is a home run all the way back to the panel, 20 amp circuit for this ground fault. And then off the load side, we feed the island. Uh, here's uh, under cabinet lights. We got a whip that will pull through the drywall and a light over the sink. Disposal all switch on its own circuit, dishwasher on its own circuit. Here's our second countertop circuit. Uh, home run back to the panel. And then this one is feeding these two. And here's another whip for our lights for the upper cabinets. A dedicated circuit for the microwave, dedicated circuit for the refrigerator. So that's six 20 amp 100 volt circuits we need for this kitchen plus the lighting, plus the range. And then if you can take a look down here, Jordan, you can see where they put in a water line for uh, your ice maker on the refrigerator. Yep. Just ran PEX, tied it in in the attic. And then I've got all our blocking in for our ceiling. I don't think we ever talked about this. But remember this this rafter up here was broken so we scabbed on that piece can you see that new piece yeah and then go back and look at our beam video this rafter is sitting on top of the beam and in order to connect it we got some 5 8 plywood out of the dumpster from the old cabinets made this piece and then made this gusset and tied it all together And then walk over here, got all our blocking in for our drywall. And I think that's it. So right down here, we have all our drywall. I've got four sheets, 12 feet long, four sheets at 10, and 10 sheets at eight feet long. Uh, we went to a local commercial drywall supplier and picked this up in a trailer. It was just a lot easier than going to a home center. All I had to do was unload it here. We didn't have to load it onto the cart, load it into the truck. So the, first, the top two sheets go on the ceiling. So let's take a look up here. Um, that's 12 foot long. This is 12 two. So we're gonna hang a full sheet and put a two inch piece here. And that'll get buried when we tape our corner. And this is all cabinets also. I've got our little brackets to help us hang a 12 footer. We'll show you those uh, when we hang the sheet rock and then when we take it down, we'll show you those things. So I think we're ready. Let's cut this sheet off. We're going to cut it to three feet wide. We'll lean it against that uh, box and then we'll Yep. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Two days ago, Jordan and I hung all the drywall in our kitchen remodel. We didn't film it because there's plenty of awesome videos on YouTube about how to hang drywall. Uh, we have a few tips and tricks of our own. If you'd like to see how we do it, uh, drop us a comment down below. Let us know if you want to see that and we'll show you that next time we hang drywall. So we hung, what, 18, 18 sheets. Yep. 12 footers, 10 footers, and eights, and came out great. I came back yesterday. I taped and um, mudded the first coat. So let's go inside and check it out.
All right. So we have uh, two more coats to put up, but one thing we noticed was uh, we have this original vent right here for the heating and air conditioning. And the other one was here, but it wasn't in line with the one behind me. And then we have this one that served the old dining room, but visually the three of them didn't line up and that that bugs me. We put everything in here with a laser, make sure everything's straight and perfect. And these three pieces of, these three uh, grills will not line up in the finished ceiling. So we decided we're gonna move them. And I think Jordan, your kitchen where you live, there's there's two in the kitchen and they they don't even match. They're, they? they're, they're so close. They're like seven inches apart and it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. So this chalk line on that side was the original center of this vent. So that chalk line is parallel to that wall. And we popped that line and determined that this one was about three inches off. So I got in the attic and I wanted to see, is it easier to move this one? Or is it easier to move this one? And it was easier to move this one. So I already did that. I just slid it over this direction. Uh, th this side's actually connected to our LVL beam. And this side's connected to a block because remember our rafters are uh, joist run this way. So I already moved that one. And now we're going to take this one, rotate it 90 degrees, and we're going to move it closer to this outside wall. And that way when you come in the room, visually all of them would be lined up because we line up all our lights and everything else. So it just makes sense to line those up. So I'm going to go in the attic. And Jordan's going to be downstairs, and the first thing we're going to do is remove this one. I already pulled all the nails. Uh, this house, it's, uh, it's not flex duct, it's, it's hard pipe, hard duct work. So just some screws and some duct tape, and it comes right apart. I'm going to remove this, like I said, and put it over there. So I'm going to get my mask on. Hey guys, we're up in the attic. We wanted to show you the finished product. We actually shot some footage yesterday of us doing the work up here but unfortunately i had a really high powered led flashlight that i love it's rechargeable and the uh, it affected the shut the combined with the shutter speed on the camera it created a strobe effect and we didn't want to put you guys through that so we decided to come up here and and shoot with just a good old incandescent light behind jordan so I'm, I'm kneeling on what used to be that opening between our two beams. And this is one of the uh, vents we moved. It just had to move this way towards the camera about two and a half inches. So I, I had to shorten the piece of duct work under this insulation. This is all rigid metal duct. How'd you shorten it? Uh, I tried to cut it up here with my snips, but it was just too... Uh, it was too hot, I couldn't get a good angle on it. So I actually took this last piece down, it was screwed and taped here. Uh, I took it downstairs and I cut it with my snips. And I brought it back up, uh, reconnected it with screws, uh, foil tape, and then this piece of insulation uh, came off of the flex duct that we purchased. Because this duct, uh, let's see if I can show you, it's pretty interesting. Bear with me. <laughs> All right. So this insulation was stapled. Here, let me put it on there so you can see it, Jordan. That's called a divergent staple. The prongs go out hmm. instead of in. Uh, it's a special stapler they make just for an application like this. Um, so I just use this and then basically big zip ties. Uh, they sell them right next to the flex duct at the home center and it clamps it together nice over here on this one this piece of rigid metal duct went straight and the the vent was somewhere near this strong back and we moved it way over there for a couple reasons it's in line with these two and we'll show you downstairs and then it puts the air flow farther towards the perimeter of the building get better cooling that way when the air flows on the perimeter 
and the return air pulls it towards the central part of the building. So I cut this one back. Let's see, it's actually it's right here. I can feel the rigid pipe end here. I left it here because of this hanger. And then that's flex all the way to our vent. We reuse the existing uh, boot and the 90. And then again, foil tape and a strap so it's well insulated. Nice, it looks good. Yep. Let's go show them downstairs. Final result? Yep. Hey, we're back downstairs, obviously. And we wanted to show you how nice these three vents look all lined up. There's a little bit of work, but well worth it. So when we do a remodel, we always want it to look like it was always that way, that this wasn't two separate rooms. So if that far vent had been where it was and turned 90 degrees, that would have been a giveaway that, hey, this used to be two rooms. But with this, it always looks like, it will always look like it's one room now. So don't go looking around your house now and finding vents out of line and, and blame us because it's not our fault. So we try to fix it for you. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate all the good comments you guys have been leaving down below in the videos. And we'll see you in the next one. See you in the next one. Good job, bud.